good afternoon, everyone. This is Tony Van Schoik from Simple Wealth. And you guys, we're bringing awesome entrepreneurs to you and best practices to share as you guys are growing your business and also navigating through the challenges of owning your own business and scaling it. So I'm really, really excited today. And you guys, please, Make sure that you're sharing the show. We want to get the word out there. We want to help people be more independent and also do their own thing. And I am so excited. So you guys, I have a very special guest with me today. He's local. I love having guests here in studio. It's so cool. It is awesome. And I'm just, I'm, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. But thank you. But thank you so much for being here. I'm honored and, you know, to, to have you come out to this new space we just built and you're like, like her fourth or fifth guest. Oh, I feel so honored. Honestly, it's like I was telling you, it's really awesome. This place, she did a really good job with, I mean, you can see the background, this, the whole, the whole atmosphere here, the way the, the sound kind of bounces off. And honestly, this view, this view is killer. <laughs> Love you. the view. Thank you. <laughs> so you guys, I have an awesome entrepreneur. His name is Dan Rivers and he is local here in the low country. And he is just helping people um, really with his uh, background, with his education, with his knowledge. But I want to give you an official uh, welcome to Dan. And I'm just going to give you a little bit of information about him. He's a he's a girl dad. Love girl dads. Yep. We're Kotex Mafia here too. <laughs> um, and loving husband. He's been in real estate since 2004. Um, and he's uh, served in that industry in different capacities. He founded um, his his, his business called Rivers Capital Group in 2021, and he's grown his portfolio to over three million in real estate. So he has a background in management, sales, and finance. And so RCG has three main pillars: real estate, business coaching, and freedom capital, which means business buying. So, um, Dan, again, welcome to the show, and I'm excited to have you on. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm super excited to chat today. Yeah, you. Uh... We met each other recently, which was exciting. And you have so much positive energy and power to you. I just, I could see why you're successful. So happy to be on the show. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I'm I'm happy to have you on the show. So, you know, when we met, you were talking a little bit about your journey and how you got, you know, from, from where you were before to where you are now. And I know that you have a very, like, really interesting story. So I would really like to open it up, you know, to our listeners you know, before we get into, you know, talking about wealth and entrepreneurism, but tell them your unique story that you have. You mean when I was younger? Yes. Okay. Uh, we all have hurdles in our lives. You know that. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I um, was playing football, sprained my ankle, and doctor heard a murmur. And within a couple of months, I ended up in surgery, my first heart surgery of two. I was 16 years old cut me open. Thank God they didn't have to replace the valve at that moment, but they had to repair my, my heart valve. Yeah. It was, uh, it was definitely a scary moment. And, um, it honestly caused me to react in more of a bad way. I didn't, I'm a 16 year old boy, I have hormones. I don't know what's going on. I just had a major heart surgery and I just experienced a near death experience. So it really caused me to, I don't know, kind of double down on being a little bit of an ass and not being the best person. And, um, I've grown up a lot since then, but yeah, yeah, it was something that was not easy to deal with when we were younger. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, you know, and I, I know that recently you had, you had to have that valve replaced, correct? correct. In 2009, okay. they put a mechanical valve in, which knock on wood, it lasts a lifetime. Like I hope it means a full lifetime, mm -hmm. but they said it lasts a lifetime. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So you've, you've been under two major surgeries in your life. You're a young guy. Mm -hmm right? You have a young family. So what are the, what are the thoughts, you know, when you had to go in and get it done the second time, was it, was it easier? Was it more difficult? How did that, how did that affect you, you know, emotionally and psychologically? It's funny. You asked me, you asked when I was 16 and then 29 year old Dan, I'd probably give you a completely different answer because mm -hmm. I wasn't willing to be vulnerable and be open, but honestly, it was scary. It was, it was really scary. The first time I can't really I don't really remember as much. I was a little bit younger, um, but I was, I do remember being scared and then coming out of it. I was, I was thankful. I woke up mm -hmm. the second time I realized I was brave the entire time up until like the night before. And I don't care how brave you can be that night before I definitely cried. And I was like, this could be my last day on earth. Mm -hmm. Basically what you think this could be my last day on earth. So um, believe it or not, I actually had had 
tumors removed. I've had, uh, I think five surgeries in my life. So like, it's not, so I've been under the knife. I've been through surgeries. These are definitely the most extreme, but, um, yeah, it's just kind of like your life kind of flashes before your eyes. And it's just, it's helped me be who I am today because I'm not willing to take a risk and live my life to the fullest. But at the time it's, yeah, you might be saying goodbye. It's, I'm scared. Yeah. I, you know, and I can relate to that because I had a near death experience when I was 50. Mm -hmm. So it, I, I really think that it changes, it, it changes your view and your outlook on a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I, you know, I, I had the same angst because I knew I was going in. Mm -hmm. And even though I was awake for mine, it still was devastating, you know, and you're like, well, just like, what if I had a reaction to the anesthesia or, you know, there's just so many different moving parts. And I think that once you get over that and you come out on the other side, that there is for, for most of us, a greater appreciation. Yeah. I've seen it. I've seen it go both ways. Like my, my mom's had some major surgeries and some won't go through it all, but she's had some really life life threatening scares. And I saw what it's done to her. It gets her a little like afraid. Mm. It gets her really afraid in life. And, and it's kind of, she's come out of her shell and she's really grown since then. And, and she's gone through some life changing events. So mm. I don't blame her. Um, so I feel like that's one way to react. And then people like you and I, um, again, nothing's right or wrong, but we were able to react and take that and say, okay, I'm going to use that to drive me. I'm going to use this to say, Hey, listen, I shouldn't be here. I think I'm on life number seven. I'll take that. <laughs> I'm going to use that to drive me to be successful Yeah, and just keep going. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know what? I and and you know, let me know if you if you're thinking the same way that I am, but I'm you know, kind of picking up where it's almost like you have more I have more grit and resilience now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah, definitely more grit and resilience. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Well, you guys, you know, we've we've had other guests on this show that have had, you know, very scary health scares mm -hmm. and as as far you know, fourth fourth person that I've talked to, you know, that has that has had a near death experience, but it's like there were entrepreneurs were wired the same way. Yep. Right. Yeah, we were talking about earlier the squirrel. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, like you had mentioned early on, I just want to touch upon this. Like being a girl dad, uh, being a dad in general, but being a girl dad, I never realized how much I would love to say that, but I absolutely do. Um, it just gives you that another layer of perspective on life of like all those near death experiences. Not only what I want for myself, but what I want to create my daughter and it, it makes me really think at least because of having those experiences like I want to I want to hopefully be there when she's graduating high school and I don't want to say walk down the aisle what if she doesn't want to get married but like whatever she wants to do I just want to be a part of her life if she grows up and I get excited for that so it just forces me to live a healthier life and live my life to the fullest yep and, kids will do that to you yeah so okay so I, I really want to talk about because the entrepreneurs um, they, they, we have a lot in common and you know, what I find is that a lot of us that live, you know, by pillars or core values, a lot of them are very similar. Mm -hmm. So I would like to, you know, find out from you and also, you know, to share with our audience, what would you say, like, what, what drives you? What are your core pillars that, that really are important to you as, as a dad, as a business owner and as a husband? I'd say first and foremost, and I know. I know it's probably common to hear, but it's integrity and it's just being a good person. It's doing what you say, saying what you do, being a good person and really, truly doing the right thing. Like I, I literally have that written on my board. Like a lot of times, like do the right thing. It's, it sounds small. It sounds easy, but so many times in business, you can be put in a situation that it's like, well, is this right? Well, can it be right? Could it kind of be right? If I do this, Am I a bad person or should I adjust or you just put in situations a lot that it's you're not necessarily a bad person for doing it, but there's just a question mark on it or what's the truly right way to do it. And if I'm questioning anything like that, I usually either go to my wife or a good friend and say, hey, hit me straight. Like, I want to do the right thing. I want to do what's right by people. First and foremost, I'm looking at saying, is this going to hurt anybody? If the answer is yes, then it's obviously not doing the right thing. But th those are like the core strengths of just trying to be a good person. Because at the end of the day, I want to make as much money as I can, but I want to do it by s serving people and helping people and helping people grow, not by taking things from people and stepping on people. So that's probably the biggest core value along with, um, I don't know if it's a core value or just kind of like a principle, but it's mindset. It's making sure we always have that positive growth mindset of, mm -hmm. of just 
Um, if I start to have that fixed mindset of I can't do something or really the net, or if I have to hear my team say, well, we can't do that. As soon as I hear that, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. How can we do that? What can we do? Or who do we have to bring in to help us do that? That's perfectly fine. But the, we can't, can't have that, atmo that atmosphere, that, that environment. It's, we can do whatever we want. I know you know this. Yeah. Like, we can go as far as we want. I just, it's just how or who. That's, that's really the question. It's not if. So, you know, it's funny you bring, you bring that up. I was just l listening to Lewis's How's The Greatest Mindset on Audible, and he actually challenged Grant Cardone because he said he couldn't get to a billion dollars. Okay. And so he challenged him to do it. And he's like, oh, no, I don't know if I can do that. And he goes, no, no, you have to change your mindset. Okay. And, you know, he had him on a year later, and he was able to hit that. Wow. But it really goes to show you, and, and you guys, I'm going to tell you this right now, is that being successful making money, being happy, having time freedom. It's all in here, yes. all of it. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Like happiness is literally a state of mind. It's so if your mind's not right, you don't have the right mindset. How are you supposed to be happy? Like, how are you ever going to find your true happiness in this? And I, I asked this question to a lot of people just to kind of hear what their answer is like, what is your definition of success? How do you define success? But it's, how do you define success now? Because success changes and success grows as you grow. But even import, more importantly, as you hit each level of success, it's okay to be happy in that level. Like right now, I'm only so successful. I've been doing this. I have 3 million in real estate. I have friends who have 50 million in real estate. Like I would love to be at that level, but I'm happy where I'm at at the level that I'm at now. I'm going to be happy again at the next level, but I'm happy now because of my mindset and because I know what truly makes me happy, which is time and family and making sure I hit those pillars. Absolutely. So, you know, you, you talked, you talked about like levels of success and being happy at those levels. What does the next level look like for you? What's Funny, your next, yeah. what's so, your next big goal? I have that. Uh, so we're bringing on a guy, we're hiring him. He agreed to start February 1st. He's coming from California. The next big goal is we've hit the seven figure company. Now we're ready to be an eight figure company. And how do we do that? It's to me, it's one of my roles is, you know, personal knowledge, personal growth, building my knowledge and figuring out what that means. I'm reading nine figure mindset by now. I can't think of his name. The guy uh, I partnered with um, Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone yes. Yeah. And um, just reading those higher level books of like, all right, um, what do I have to do to run that eight, nine figure business, having mentors, having coaches, being around the right people who are already doing that. So my next goal is in the next 24 months to be running a $10 million gross company so that mm -hmm. I, but doing it the right way and having the right team members in there, having eights and nines and tens be on there um, to help me grow and, and really establish a good core base so that we stick to our mission and our vision and our principles. Um, for some reason, I like the word principles more than core values, neither one's right or wrong, but sticking to those things so that as we grow into the bigger company and we become a $10 million company, our, our, our service level doesn't you know, go under, we don't start giving, you know, bad service or whatever the case is. We are actually just getting better and giving more value as we grow. Yeah. And that's so important. I mean, right now in today's age, customer service is everything, mm -hmm. everything. And you guys, he was referring to, that's why I was looking because I wanted to look it up to give you the information. And this book keeps popping up. Really? Yes. Nine figure mindset by Brandon Dawson. That's the one you guys, you've seen it all over. Cause I know that if you follow me and I'm seeing it, then, you know, it's, it's, it's now I got to get the book, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It's been a great read. I'm about halfway through it. And yeah. honestly, the first half just kind of talks about his life. Mm -hmm. uh, he works at, he worked and helped grow Audigy, which is, a, I won't ruin the whole book, but, and then he does talk about Cardone Ventures. And now he's going back into the second chapter, really the mindset, the nine figure mindset, mm -hmm. in the second half of the book. So I'm excited to really get into this next half. Oh, that's, that's so cool. Okay. I can't wait to get it. So that'll go on my Amazon reading list today. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, I, I know that we've, you know, talked a little bit about some of the health challenges that you've been through. Would you say that that has been your biggest personal challenge? Yeah, I would say health is probably that. And actually health is, was a really big one recently. Imposter syndrome. Oh, oh, it's imposter syndrome. oh. Oh, yeah, that's a big one for people. Yeah, imposter syndrome. And it's partly because of, it's partly because, you know, when you, when I've realized as I level up is when the imposter syndrome starts to hit. When I'm ready to level up, it starts to really hit and be like, hey, are you really, 
the right person? Are you someone who actually can level up? And I start doubting myself. And that's where the mindset really kicks in to get, get rid of that person. But it's also, as I mentioned earlier on, like, and I've been open up about this on my social media, so I'm okay with this. I was kind of an asshole when I was younger. I didn't do everything wrong. I tried to be a good person mostly. My dad taught me how to be a good person, but I wasn't, I was angry when I was 16. I was, I was a torque. I was, I was having heart surgeries. I was hanging around wrong crowds. I was, I was just didn't do all the right things. And I wasn't, didn't always treat everybody the best way. And so like, as I grow older, I'm like, well, who am I now? Am I, I was letting my past define who I am currently. And I had to be open about it to kind of get past that, to be like, Hey, it's okay. If my past is my past and what I did is what I did. Now I'm, my second chapter of life is to be a better person to grow and to try to help people build wealth, to try to help myself and my family. And bottom line, it's just do the right thing and be a better person. So that's my second half of my life. Doesn't mean I don't make mistakes. I make plenty of mistakes. I still am an asshole once in a while. And my wife will keep me in check for that. Oh and I appreciate God. her. She will let me know. <laughs> She's an awesome person. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's that imposter syndrome and getting over that and realizing I am good enough to be successful. Well, comparison is the thief of joy. It really is. Um, the other thing that I also wanted to share is that um, the, the one, you know what, sometimes I think imposter syndrome happens is because we think we're being egotistical. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. Yep. Where, where the ego is coming into play and we do deserve all of the success that, 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 you know, God wants us to have. Mm -hmm. We deserve everything that we've ever desired because in one shape or or another form being people of service is that when you've served enough people those gifts and and those you know those realizations and all of those things are going to come back to you but you're able to even bless more people yep that's so, the whole thing about it like so many good people that i know well, the more successful they are the more people they're helping and i did want to touch on because that makes sense egotistical because in order to be i find the in the way to be successful, you have to be super confident and then it can, it can teeter totter on cockiness. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole balancing act of being confident without being cocky, staying humble and vulnerable and just balancing all that. Yep. That's what it means because if you're not confident, then you're not going to make those moves, take the risk and you're not going to be a successful entrepreneur. So you, it's, it gets tough to balance sometimes. It, it really is. But you know, um, it, I don't think it's cockiness. I think we've become such a soft society and we're worried about pissing somebody off, <laughs> really, that you can't honestly be truthful and have a direct conversation Yeah, <laughs> because people get offended. And this is really, this is, I, I love bringing people out here that are not afraid to live in their truth and be honest about it. Right. And, you know, as far as I, I you know, I'm really big on using words, Right. I, and I, you know, I have to, I've had to retrain my brain so many times, you know, people use that acronym fear for the wrong, the wrong words, instead of saying, you know, face everything and rise. Yep. Okay. That's the first thing it's, they're not failures, they're lessons mm -hmm. and you're attempting to learn something. And so those lessons come and those are the things, well, let me just say this. If you're making the same mistake over and over again, you're just an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, let's face it, right? Yeah. The mistakes or the failures are, are, are meant to be learned from. Mm -hmm. So you don't repeat them in the future. And that's why, like they say, like God keeps on throwing the same thing at you because you're not learning from your lesson. And yeah. um, I just went to an event and the guy was talking about it's a, it's a feather. I forget what it was, whatever it was. It was a feather, a smack and a, and a train. He's basically like, usually the feather tickles me and says, hey, hey, dumbass, learn from this lesson. And I don't. And then you come and you get the smack. Hey, learn from this lesson and you don't. And then you got to get the train, which is that really big learning lesson. Like, yep, I've been trying to tell you this. You need to learn from this lesson. And then once you do, you don't see those same things happen in your future. It's amazing. No, you don't. Um, you no. don't. Okay. So we talked about a personal challenge. What about a professional challenge that you've had? Professional challenge. Okay. What have I had professionally? What was, <laughs> what's been your biggest challenge? that you were faced with that you overcame. Okay, we did talk about the imposter syndrome. I guess that's personal, but that did affect business. Other, oh, other than that, it's been actually the team building. So I would say that's been a little bit of a challenge, hiring the right players. So at first, probably like a lot of business owners do out there and entrepreneurs, and I don't <laughs> blame you, 
we don't make a lot of money. Like we're, we're making a little bit of money. We're bringing in revenue and um, I'm all about investing it back in my business for myself or personal growth. But I kept on hiring fours and fives. Mm -hmm. Someone who's just good enough that I could see a little bit of talent and they might be super talented somewhere else, but they just weren't the right for the position. But they were a good person. So I wanted to lift them. up. And I'm like, hey, come on, I got you. I'll keep lifting you up. When you're starting a business and trying to be successful, you can't be lifting people up left and right. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a wrong, like you could help lift people up. It's not wrong to try to help people. And I think it's awesome. And I want to be able to do that as part of my business model, but my core team have to be nines and tens. They have to be people who I give direction to, they help us grow. Like they could really be a part of building an amazing team, an amazing organization. It can't be someone that I'm trying to lift up and pull up. So that was probably the biggest business lesson I learned is stop trying to lift people up, hire someone who's amazing. Cause then I, I'll give you, a, for instance, the guy that we're hiring that we're bringing in from uh, California. I told him, I was like, Hey, I really need you to commit for two years to me because we're trying to grow a small company. Here's our goals. Here's how we're going to hit them. His thing to me was like, Oh yeah, I figured two years at least. And he's like, all I need you to do is give me KPIs every three months of what I need to hit so that I know that I'm tracking in the right way. And I'm like, Holy crap. I've never had someone ask me that. Mm -hmm. That's a 10 that I'm bringing on that I'm hiring. I'm like the fact that they knew KPI. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the KPI and that he's like, give me this track and I'm going to crush it. And I'm like, I love this. Like, thanks for asking that. Yes. So you guys, if you're an entrepreneur and you don't know what KPIs mean, it means key performance indicators. Yep. You need to get really up close and personal with your KPIs. Um, it was so funny. I, I started a, a, a new accountability group for November and just really helping people map out what their numbers look. They had no idea what it meant to map out their next 30 days. I'm like, oh Lord, we just need to start all over again. Yep. Not that it's their fault. They just, they, they, they just haven't been taught that yet. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, it's it's really great to hear that, you know, he's gonna he, he's gonna do amazing things for for your business i can feel it <laughs> oh i'm like super excited to bring him in it was it was that and he just had some other amazing things that he just like the way he asked it the way oh he said oh by the way this is the way i learned you give me the solution you tell me how it you envision the solution you tell me exactly how it looks i'll reverse engineer and get us to it and i'm like jeez this guy he's like i'm telling you the way i think i'm telling you the way i learn i'm telling you the way i track my kb and i'm like Yes, you're you're right for this for me to get to that ten million dollar business that I want to be plus. Yeah, so plus. yeah, it's so funny because I I teach and coach the same way. Mm -hmm. We have to have the goal and then reverse engineer it mm -hmm. and then break it down into you know bite size action you know steps. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Honestly, when I hit, if it's okay, I'll talk about this. Yes. Quick, but yeah, my I've only been people are like, oh, you've been only been down here five years. I'm like, yeah, I really only been in this running it as a business for about three years. And the game changer was the first year I got my coach. 2021, I got a coach. And my goal that year was to gross five hundred thousand dollars. And she we reverse engineer. Okay, well, what are your what's your income producing um businesses? All right, well, this is how I produce income, flipping homes at the time, a little bit of private money lending, and then real estate sales. Mm -hmm. So we broke that down. All right, you make thirty thousand dollars a flip, you want to hit a hundred thousand, you sell, you know, you flip three and a half or whatever, say four homes for 120 and reverse engineered it. And she made it so simple which I'm sure the way you do it, that by July, I hit 500,000 and I ended up doing 779 that year. And I don't say that as a gloat or else if I say that as like, I surprised myself, I've never made more than $189,000 in a year. And I'm like, who am I to do this? And then I did it because a coach broke it down so simply. And then I just followed the model. Yep. It was that simple. Yep. I mean, it's that simple. It wasn't easy. It was that simple. simple. I want to be very clear on that. There's a lot of hard work behind a lot of hours and a lot of failures, failing forward and learning lessons. But it was simple because at the end of the day, I kept looking and be like, Hey, it doesn't matter. I still need 12 more sales. I need two more flips. How do I make this happen? Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yep. You, you, like we have such similar styles of how we speak, what, you know, terms that we use and we're in two completely different industries. You guys, <laughs> we are. it's the same. For That's what I always tell people. That's why it's called simple wealth. Right. Yep. Cause it is, it, it's not difficult. Yep. The work you have to put in is hard. You, and, and as an entrepreneur, you have to have personal accountability. I cannot tell you. And, you know, just, just because, you know, our, our main business is, you know, network marketing, 
that is the biggest challenge that we have, right? Is the personal accountability and the consistency. You can't scale. You can't grow a business. You can't have time freedom. You can't have financial freedom without showing up and doing the work, period. And it's all hard work. It doesn't matter. Just pick your fuck, pick your fucking heart. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, you want your heart to be struggling for money. You want your heart to be, you know, holding yourself accountable. And that's, that's so true. It's actually one of the principles I just added was accountability because, you know, I, sometimes you'll hear a team member be like, well, this person didn't follow through on that. They didn't do it. I was like, who owned the task? And I'll ask them, I'll say, who owned the task? They'll be like, I did. And I'll be like, well, then who needed to follow up on that? And do that? It's, it's holding ourselves accountable. And I'm not doing it to listen. I make mistakes all the time. I screw up, but I'll hold myself accountable. And I, I'm sure you're the same way. I beat myself up enough. No one else has to beat me up when I make a mistake. Yep. Uh, especially if I let my team down. <laughs> you yeah. and I both. I just, I just had a really hard conversation um, with uh, a couple of people today that I hold in very high regard and the ball was dropped on them and they were afraid to come and talk to me about it. And I'm like, don't ever do that again, mm -hmm. because that's the last thing I want is I never, I never want to disappoint people. You're going to have to, you, you'll have to have hard conversations, yep. right? But you know what, even though situations may be disappointing, I don't want to personally disappoint anybody, mm -hmm. right? Especially when they're showing up and they're doing the do, but their, their needs and their goals and their wants are not getting fulfilled because the right people aren't listening yep. and the right people aren't there to help them along the way. And that to me was like, I, I'm like, no, you need to come and talk to me now. Don't wait for two months. Yeah. Well, that's, it's, uh, most people like to put their head in the sand yeah. when something happens and we are the same creature because I, I would rather, if I have bad news, I tell all my clients, like my listing clients, I'm like, if a contract's falling through something, I'm calling you on the phone and you're knowing right when it happens. I'm yep. not waiting a day or two because we may be able to make something happen. We got to make a decision right then. And I'll come to you with, you know, some options on what to do, but the faster in my experience, the faster I've delivered bad news, the better it's been on the receiving end. Yep. It just has. It doesn't mean it's great on the receiving end all the time. A lot of times they might be pissed and I'd be like, this situation sucks, but I appreciate you addressing it right away. Calling, not texting, not emailing, calling me, letting me know what the issue is and what the plan is to correct. Mm -hmm. That's that's what most people just want. Don't put your head in the sand because guess what? The problem just grows larger. It does. Well, not, not only that too, when you, when, when you guys are struggling with anything at all, when you're having these crucial conversations with people, they may have ideas that you didn't think of to help you circumvent or make the 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 challenge that you're going through easier. Yep. And it's really important because I think I think collective think tanks are really important. Oh, I'm a huge fan of that. Yes. Not everybody knows everything. I no. said, oh, I was actually talking to a guy on the phone yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was I said, hey, what what are your skills? I said, don't bullshit me. I was like, no one's good at everything. So don't tell me, oh, I, you know, I was like, that's why I think the school system screwed up. Like you should not have to get an A in every class in every category no. because you're asking someone to literally be perfect in every category. It's just, it's, it's impossible to do without burning someone else. So what are your skill sets? And he goes, he goes, no, seriously, I took the disc test. Here's what I did. Here's what I do really well. And he was honest with me. And I'm like, that's, that's all I want because we could work to achieve something together. Because if you're not honest, then I'm going to put you in a role that you're not going to succeed in because you're telling me you're good at everything. And then we're both going to fail. Yeah. No, I mean, John Maxwell says mm -hmm. you, you work on your strengths, you outsource your weaknesses. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, if you're, yep. if you're, a, if you're a three or four, an organization, hire a VA, you know what, have your kids help you out. If they're old enough, most kids, most kids can navigate this <laughs> way better than, you know, I can. Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you like my 15, my 15 year old, she's almost 16. My 15 year old and um, my 23 year old daughters, they're way better at, you know, certain technology stuff than I, way better than I am. I'm like, go for it. My two year old might be better than me. So <laughs> I, I might be a negative two in organization. So like, I get you. Yeah. I know. I'm serious. She's like, I'm like, how did you do that? I'm like, Lisa, she just did something with the camera that I don't even know how you do that to the camera. Yeah. At two. It's, so yeah. Bottom yeah. line is I couldn't agree with you more. It is okay to be vulnerable like know what you're not good at bring on the people who are great at that because the only person you're hurting is yourself and yep. your company yeah truly truly um the other thing too is that when you don't spend time working on the shit that you're not good at it gives you time to work on the things that you're really good at yes. like 
I, I am, my, I love, I love the teaching and coaching aspect of, you know, of, of our network marketing business. It's what I excel at. It's what I love. I mean, like I'm always willing to provide, I, I'm a solution provider. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that, that, you know, I work in that strength. So what would you say is your strength in your business? It's funny that you asked that because we actually have, um, and I, don't, I shouldn't mind verbatim, but we basically have everybody has the three things that if they do extremely well, it doesn't necessarily matter the other things they do. That's what they're hired to do. And they got to be great at it. So like basically mine is um, adapting, being able to kind of envision what's going on and adapting the business, adapting the company, adapting situations and systems. It's um, being able to build strong relationships with people and recognize an opportunity and then bringing those opportunities back to my team to be able to capitalize on. Okay. Awesome. So I love that. Okay. So I want to, I want to talk about, you know, because there's so much, you know, stigmatism around the word wealth, yep. right? So I want to talk about what, what is for me, I, I have, I have like, you know, my, my five things that are, that, you know, are involved in all of that health, fitness, faith, finances, family, um, freedom. Uh, that's a big one. <laughs> um, so what would you say, what is, what is wealth really mean to you? I consider myself wealthy because I can do whatever I want with my time whenever I want to do it and do the things that I want to do. So I'm not truly at the peak of what I would consider myself being wealthy, but even at, again, as you mentioned, you know, what I have as a portfolio, what I have in the bank and all that stuff, it's nowhere near the growth I want to be at, but I do consider myself wealthy already mm -hmm. because I write my own schedule. If I want to bring my daughter to school, I'll bring her to school. If I want to pick her up, I'll pick her up and, no one's writing my schedule over me. Yep. So I already consider myself wealthy for that because at the end of the day, I don't give a shit how much money you have. If it's taking up all your time, then are you truly wealthy? Yeah. That's my question. So I feel like I'm probably more truly wealthy than the person who makes 50 million a year, but hasn't seen their kid in months because they're just glued to the office yep. chair. And I feel, I feel bad for that person. Yeah. Um. How can you truly find happiness like that? So that's what I, now- a step above, yes, I would be able to love, you know, to have probably 10 plus million in assets so that I could actually live off the passive income of that for the rest mm -hmm. of my life. That's the next level of wealth for me. But right now, I'm pretty wealthy. And you're a young guy. So you've got, I mean, I'm you're in my 40s, but yes, you're, 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 you're a young, you're, you're a <laughs> young guy. So, you know, the, the, the great thing is, though, too, is that, you know, you, you already have your path figured out. The universe is going to grant it to you because you're asking. And, the, you know, the thing about it is, is that you're never too old or never too young to go down the path that you want to go down. You just need to align yourself. And this is why you said you got a coach and they were able to help you quite a bit. You have to align yourself with somebody that 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 is doing it, that is successful at it, and that you can learn from because there's a lot of fakers out there. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of fakers. You know, when you talk about coaches that area specifically, and it doesn't matter what industry you're in yep. across the board, you need to make sure that they've done the do if you're going to learn from them and learn how to replicate that. A lot of people that are out there, they'll they'll say that they can teach it, but they can't do it. Yep. It's bullshit. It's, it's absolute bullshit. It's absolute. <laughs> <laughs> now you're right. You want to make sure whoever your mentor is, your coaches are, your teachers are, the circle that you're around, aren't people that are just being flashy and it's already starting to be shown, but over the next 24 months, as the market just gets a little weird, you're going to see more and more of the people exposed, uh, which is sad because unfortunately, I think we live in a society where it's the keeping up with the Joneses is you have to look successful. Um, to me, and I, I don't mind, I'm an open book. I'll tell you guys everything. Like my mortgage right now is under $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I have a house. It's a, it's a nice house. I love my house. Uh, I got a couple acres of land. I see the deer in the morning. It's a, it's a beautiful house. I'm super in love with it, but I would stress out if I had a five, six, seven thousand dollars a month mortgage right now and I could afford it and I could do it, but it's just, that's me and my mentality. I need to keep certain expenses low. I need to keep certain things that, and trust me, anybody who knows me knows I'll go buy a nice bottle of wine or we'll go on a nice vacation and I'll spend my money. But on the reoccurring bills, God forbid I had a temper back and my business has, is struggling a little bit, or as I'm building, I don't really take much money because I got to put it back in the business. I'm not struggling because of it, because I don't give a shit what the Joneses think next door yep. of me. I don't care. Like I care about what my wife thinks of me as a person, what people think of me as a person. And 
I think this might even be an old Navy hoodie. I don't know, but I, it doesn't bother me. Like I want to make sure that like my, my, my ability to sleep at night and put my head in the pillow is I'm not stressing personally about finance. Yep. I stress enough about my business and my team and growing that just don't want to stress personally. Yeah. No, there's so, too much. There's way too much of it anyways. So don't, don't try to, my point of it, sorry, to digress a little bit, but my mm -hmm. point of that was like, have the goals of buying the Lamborghini. I freaking love that. Buy the Lamborghini, but make sure you can buy it four times. Make sure like you are so wealthy that you're buying it cash and it's not a big deal. Don't buy it, stretch yourself so thin that it's like, holy crap, I can't make my Lamborghini payment this month. That's the thing that scares me. I yeah. love the fact that people like, I hope if your aspirations to buy a Lamborghini, I hope you get to that level and go buy a Lamborghini, but just wait until you're at a level that you can do it passively. That's what someone told me. It might've been my coach or just the mm -hmm. circle I'm around is, when you could start buying things off your passive income, that's when you start buying it. Yeah. It's your passive income buying. It. Yep. Yep. You don't have to make anything active for it. Yeah. Nope. Nope. I, I mean, like literally I, two years ago, all I've done with our capital gains is invested yep. in, in property. So in our land or the self storage and stuff that we're doing. So it's a great that's awesome. opportunity. And not only that, you guys, there's huge tax advantages in real estate, massive. Yes. So, I mean, it's the, it literally is the best out there next to infinite banking that I've seen. Have you seen anything else? No, it's, like it, it's really real. I mean, real estate, the tax law is written to provide the most benefits to real estate. Of course real estate it is. Yeah. Right. Of course yep. it is. <laughs> so, okay. Last question. Yes. Um, you know, I, for, for most entrepreneurs, they're visionaries. Okay. So where, where do you see where, where do you see you, your family, your business, your team? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh, I see us. It's funny. We're starting to put order charts to how we see our business in the future, not just now and how it's operating. So I would say I would stay, I would have the CEO, COO, CFO have a whole high level executive team. So I could literally be a part of the vision of the company mm -hmm. and still be a part of it in that capacity. So I'm still, but I've, I've nothing to do with the operations day to day or all that stuff. I just like, get to talk to my high level team once a week, see how well they're doing, see how the operations, give them advice, some guidance, ways to adapt. That's it in the business world. Then I could focus more on um, whether it's coaching mm -hmm. or um, the impact program. It's a nonprofit that I'm a part of where we help mentor kids. I do really enjoy that. So I'd be able to spend more time on the mentoring of the kids. And then on our personal front, the selfish front, is just to be able to travel. Like we love to travel. Mm. So it may be we were able to spend two months in Italy this year. So like if I can go and spend a month in a different country once a year and then quite a other, you know, trips with my wife and just because uh, I could do that, the high level working on the road and yes. just maybe just live in different areas. Because yeah. I, I love the perspective. Like when we lived in Italy for two months, we got to see the perspective of how Italians live. It wasn't just about living in Italy. It's about like how they perceive life. Mm -hmm. And it's, we can go down a rabbit hole on that one, but I'd love to do that in just different areas and just the perspective of different people, how they live their lives. And like, who's to say what I'm doing now is really going to bring me my perfect utility. So by experiencing it in different areas, I might be able to find a spot that's like, Hey, wait a second. This is, this is really us. This is where we belong. Yep. Yeah. So That's awesome. I love to travel. It's, it's new. It's a learning experience. Honestly, mm -hmm. makes you much more worldly. And also too, man, my kids, they're they're so different, you know, being able to 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 learn and glean from the people that, you know, we've been able to expose them to and um for them to be involved in in the things that we that that we were, you know, and I mean, my kids have been, you know, complete schooled completely different. So they have a vast, like they just have a wider sense. And their speaking abilities, the, 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 the way that they relate to other people. And you'll see this in, in your baby as she, you know, grows too, cause you're a different type of parent. Okay. Because you're an entrepreneur, we're the one percenters. So it's a complete, completely different dynamic with your family. And I'm just excited of, like you had mentioned, I think one of the biggest things, um, I'll give a shout out to my boy, Chris Singleton. He wrote a book uh, about perspective of people and how they, how like two people, can have a strong stance that are completely opposite sides, but their mm -hmm. perspectives, if you read their perspectives, you can kind of understand both sides. Mm -hmm. So I truly feel, and maybe I'm wrong, but I truly feel a lot of hate in this world and I hate going around is because so many people have one perspective of something. And if we could just learn different cultures and just be down, 
even different areas of the United States and just be around different people and just listening to different perspectives, whether you completely agree or not, it maybe it just takes the hate down a notch. Mm-hmm. That would be great. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping to bring to my my daughter and my family is like, because I open up my eyes, trust me, I was strong one way when I was in college. And now I really realize that like, I try to analyze each each situation, the way it comes, I try to analyze it like from a person's point of view, someone who grew up a certain way is going to have a lot of different perspective than someone who grew up a different way. And rightfully so. So that's my take on it. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, we're going to wrap up this interview. It's been so great. What would be, what would be your advice? Like what, what is the best advice you've ever gotten that has really made a huge change in, in whether it's personal or professional it's funny this one sounds simple and basic but i think a lot of people probably need to hear this because i know i did when i was 24 years old i started off in property management and i went to my boss i mean let's put it this way i went from banking to property management they gave me 16 properties day one and said manage these properties i didn't know what the hell i was doing so whatever i had a question i go to the vp because he's the one who hired me i go sean hey i got this question i asked him the question he goes don't ever come to me with a question without a proposed solution. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, okay. And the older I got, I really understood what he was saying was, I want to make sure you're really trying to think and work hard at a solution mm-hmm. and not just trying to find the easy way out on getting answers of people. Because the more you think, the more you learn, the more you grow, and the more value you bring to the workforce. So that's really what he was saying. It wasn't necessarily don't waste my time. It was, hey, basically, I know you got this. Go do your research come back with a proposed solution and then I'll guide you from there. And I thought it was really strong advice to this day. I still. That served you well in any part of life. Yes. (laughs) Any part of life. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Dan, it was a pleasure having you here today and I cannot wait to, you know, share your wisdom and your story with, you know, the world. And um, I'm just really super honored that you were here and a guest on our show. Thank you, Tony. Yeah. I really appreciated the talk today. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, Simple Wealth, make sure you share it. Um, The podcast drop every Monday at noon. So we always feature an entrepreneur or tips to make you the best version of you in your professional and your personal life. So you guys take care. This is Tony with Dan. Love you guys. Bye-bye.